Time now to expand our conversation. Joining me for a roundtable discussion of politics and business is Speaker Davey Carter, once again, along with Representative Alan Kerr and talk business blogger and contributor Jason Tolbert. Welcome, gentlemen, to the program. All right. Thank you, sir. We're talking about deals. Mm -hmm. You're involved in a lot of deals this past year, so I'm going to start with you and we'll work our way around. The private option was one of the biggest deals of 2013. I guess what was the who, who do you credit for coming up with the concept of how to make this change? Do you get all the credit? Or no, do you? no, 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 no. Uh, John Burris, Dismang, uh, Senator Dismang, uh, Sanders, uh, Lamoureux, uh, Bruce Westerman was involved early on. Uh, I mean, I'm going to forget some people, but there were a lot of people that that got involved and you know it it, it was a, a deal so to speak. I mean, we, we mm -hmm. use that term but you know when we realized that what was going to happen if we nothing if we didn't do anything uh, that's when I think the turning point was at least for me I mean was there we we all agree that there was a problem an underlying problem and could we solve that mm -hmm. a different way than uh, what was laid out in front of us so you know I I'm, uh, I'm excited uh, about where we are. Mm -hmm. uh, if we, there was a committee meeting the other day and uh, mm -hmm. it, it, and public health and uh, it did kind of got overlooked, but you know, we're, uh, the department put out some numbers where 115,000 uh, people are coming off Medicaid through this process, which is one of the driving mm -hmm. uh, reasons why we did what we did is to decrease, decrease Medicaid rolls. And, um, so I, I think we're in a good spot, and I think there's going to be some good news to, over the coming weeks. Representative Kerr, you were opposed to the private option when it came yes, up sir. for a vote. Do you, when, with what you're seeing now from the private option, does it look like it's working to you? Um, honestly, uh, you're, you're talking to someone that, that, that works in the health insurance industry every single day. All I see is, is a lot of frustrated people. Uh, I see a lot of uh, folks that uh, um, were promised a product that can't have access to the product. Um, I don't see it working well. It, it, it may level out in the future. Uh, I just don't know. But right now, uh, a lot of the folks who, who had health insurance to begin with are paying three times as much, mm. honestly. And um, uh, my daughter-in-law is one of those folks that um, would have fit real well into the private option. And we sat down and tried to get her signed up the other day and, and, and couldn't do it because of the, the system simply wouldn't let us in. So uh, we're we're hoping, you know. Uh, I, I know Davey had a ha, has has uh, a big vision for it in the future. All I'm I'm looking at is is the practical use today, isn't isn't real good, and I'm hoping it'll get better. What are you hearing, Jason, in terms of the politics of it? How's it playing out? Sure, it's interesting to watch it develop. I think we're getting to the stage where it's no longer uh, theoretical about what's going to happen. We're seeing it actually start to be implemented, and actually starting to go into place. And so it, the, the tricky thing is that you have the, the state private option, then you have the federal Obamacare, and the two mm -hmm. things get, get mingled together so much that it's hard to separate the two out. Um, and as we're really seeing really a disastrous rollout of the federal Obamacare, all the problems with healthcare.gov, uh, mm -hmm. that, that almost brings the whole, the whole thing down. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it, as we move into the to phase where, where these things are actually going into place, implementation is beginning, uh, whether it works or not, I think is going to be the determining factor as to whether it stays or not. People, people don't care so much about the philosophical angle of it. They care about whether the trains run on time. Right. And if it doesn't work, it's not going to stick around. All okay, right. Can, can, can Go I ahead, kind sure. of think yeah. back off that a little bit? Yeah. I could not agree more with what Alan said about how this has been handled from the administration in Washington. I mean, I am, I am still very much against the Affordable Health Care Act and what's going on nationally, and that could not have been handled any worse uh, from start to finish. Um, but I'm not sure it's finished yet. Well, so. no, well, from start to where we are. So yeah. I, I agree. I agree totally that it has been a just a huge debacle nationally, and it's not fair to the yeah. American citizens. But I do find a little glimmer of hope. At least we do have what we have set up in Arkansas that we're not just stuck with what was going to be rolled out uh, forcefully on us anyway. So, so what, what happened? Well, I, I think the, uh, and, and I agree with part of what he says, that, that uh, on the philosophical level that, that uh, it, it may be good for us in the long run. However, um, you know, you've got a product that they don't have access to, and uh, that's still going to be some strain. Um, at the end of the day, you know, um, can they, can they uh, actually get health care? You know, that's, that's what we're looking at. 
60 seconds, does the private option comes up for a vote again next year? Jason, what, what does your crystal ball tell you what happened well, if it was today? I think it's going to have to be resold again. Uh, one, of the, one of the votes for it in the Senate is now gone uh, over in Jonesboro. Paul Bookout was, was for it. He's now no longer in the Senate. Uh, that election could determine whether you have a yes vote or a no vote down that chamber. I think it's going to be very close in the Senate chamber. I think it could come down to a one vote margin. And what happens with, with the, the health care uh, reform over the next two or three months, and I guess really two months if we're talking about the fiscal session, will determine whether it gets renewed or not. Right, I'm going to get right. y'all's opinion after this commercial break on that, so stick around here. I'm with Speaker Davy Carter, Representative Alan Kerr, Jason Tolbert from Talk Business. We've got to take a quick commercial break. We're back with that and some predictions from our roundtable after this word from our sponsors. Arkansas cable providers are connecting our state to the world through our state-of-the-art broadband networks, educators, health care providers, emergency responders, law enforcement personnel, and consumers have access to the information superhighway like never before, many times at greatly reduced costs. That's our commitment to making Arkansas a leader in the digital age. Arkansas cable providers are indeed connecting our state to the world, and we're just getting started. Welcome back. Our roundtable discussion continues with Speaker of the House Davey Carter, State Representative Alan Kerr, Talk Business Blogger Jason Talbert. Alan, I'm coming to you yes. first here. All right, so in the fiscal session in February, potentially the private option funding vote comes up again. Does it have the votes to pass? Uh, like Jason, I think it's going to be extremely close. Extremely close. A lot closer than you saw it the last time. Well, it couldn't be much closer. <laughs> yeah. It was only like a two-vote <laughs> two well, margin last yeah. time. So how much closer can it With get? The, well, it, it may be down to one vote, uh, quite honestly, because, uh, I mean, you know, like we were talking before the break, the whole nation is looking at Arkansas to see if this is going to hold up, see if it's going to work. Speaker Carter, you've got whips in place. What are they telling you? How many votes are out there? Um, I think, I mean, look, it's going to be debated again, and it should be. It's a big deal. Uh, it's important. Uh, I think it'll be close. I think at the end of the day uh, it'll pass because I feel like we're making some uh, very good progress, uh, and I think that will start coming to light here over the next few weeks, and I think we need to give this a shot. If we don't give our private option a shot and do what we're doing, mm -hmm. we're going to be stuck with what's going on across the country and we don't have any control over that so I think that will prevail over everything And everything else. pivots back to Medicaid mm -hmm. the way it was if we don't enact these reforms? We don't have our, we, we no more private insurance. We mm -hmm. go straight back to what's going on in Washington, D.C. Right. All right. right. If there's appetite for that? Either one of you? Well, and, that, and that's the question, is what, what's going to happen if, if, if it does drop? What happens to those people who have now switched? And that's going to be, I think, kind of a mess, really. All right. I'm Prediction. sure it'll be a bigger mess than it is now. <laughs> All right. Ahead. Predictions for 2014. We've been talking about 2013 and how some things may play out. Let's, we'll start with Alan, then we'll go Davey, then we'll go Jason. Predictions for 2014. Predictions for 2014. Yeah. I think uh, uh, industry, I think business is going to do a lot better. I think you're going to see uh, the, uh, the home sales industry. I think the price is going to come up on home sales, which is another one of those pivotal things that they, they measure for, uh, for you know, the economy itself. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, politically, I, I think um, uh, I think you're going to have some surprises. I think you're going to have some things that that we kind of thought was going to happen. So. <laughs> All right, David. Um, I think we'll have a good year. We have a million, million three uh, citizens coming off of uh, the extended unemployment benefits. Um, so I think that will drive down because of the way we calculate that, you know, the unemployment number. Uh, you know, we go into last year. Looked last night. We came into last year with a ten-year Treasury at about 1.8 percent. It's at 3 percent again. At the end of it, right now, at mm -hmm. the end of this year, and I think uh, the the big underlying story next year to me is how the Fed handles unwinding this four trillion dollar balance sheet that it's been building up over the last two or three years. So that we'll be talking about that this time next year. All right, two business predictions, sure. Jason. You got to go politics. I'll, on I'll get me. back to politics <laughs> with mine. 2013, we saw a lot of sort of minor scandals take place here in Arkansas uh, with State Treasurer Martha Schaffner. 
uh, State Senator Paul Bookout. I think we're going to see those continue. I think you're going to hear about more scandals come out during 2014. I think there's going to be kind of a slow trickle as, as maybe one or two more of those come out as the year progresses. Democrats and Republicans? I think it'll be a bipartisan. I think it'll be a <laughs> more. Right. Right. He didn't say Lieutenant Governor Mark Dar. I'll say Lieutenant Governor Mark Dar. Gentlemen, thank you very much for being with us. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. That's all for this week's edition of Talk Business and Politics. As always, we appreciate you tuning in. Have a great rest of your weekend. I'm Roby Brock. We'll see you next time.